In the good old days, thermal paste was kind of a big deal. Everyone had to have something good, like uh, Arctic Silver 5, since bad thermal pastes could be like five degrees worse or more. Not only that, but bad thermal pastes could be conductive or capacitive and fry your stuff if you weren't super careful when you were applying them. But lately, honestly, the pre-applied stuff on your CPU cooler has been good enough to the point where you don't really need to mess with it. But what is good enough? Anyway, what if you actually do want the best? Well, then you might have to go to the guys at Cool Laboratory because they're cool and they have a laboratory. Now, if you browse forums like overclock.net, then you've no doubt heard about Cool Laboratory's liquid thermal compounds before. As the name implies, it is a liquid thermal solution instead of the thick pastes that you normally see. Makes a lot of sense, I guess, since the purpose of a thermal compound is to fill in the micro gaps in the machined surfaces of your processor and your CPU cooler in order to maximize contact and heat dissipation. So we have the Liquid Ultra version with us, which according to their safety data sheet is made up of gallium, indium, rhodium, silver, zinc, and bismuth. It's all suspended in a graphite copper matrix. Despite its looks, it does not contain any mercury and will not poison you internally, but we also wouldn't recommend eating it either. One very important thing to note is it will only work on copper or silver surfaced heat sinks. The compound reacts with aluminum and will form a black stain that actually ends up insulating it. Dun, dun, dun. Now, unlike other thermal solutions, you can't just put a drop on and install the CPU. There's actually a bit of prep involved. Step one. Thoroughly clean the surface with isopropyl alcohol. They give you a little towel with some 70% on it, but anything else works too. After that, you use their cleaning pad, this is step two, to actually scrub the processor and the surface of your cooler. Yes, it's essentially a Brillo pad. And yes, it will rough up the surfaces, which yes, could affect any warranty claims that you might make for those things. It's actually similar to the prep that you would do when sanding something in order to uh, have paint adhere to it. After wiping it down, uh, once again, is step three. You're ready to apply the Liquid Ultra. They recommend using only a tiny amount, roughly three to four milliliters for an average size processor. We're using a 2011 CPU though, so we used a tiny bit more. Squeeze it onto the middle and then start using the supplied brush to lightly paint it on. Be careful how you use the brush though. This was Anthony's first time applying this product and he ended up soaking a lot of it into the bristles of the brush. You wanna make sure you use the cleaning pad very evenly across both of your surfaces. Anthony missed part of the edge of the processor and had a very hard time getting the liquid Ultra to stick to the surface. Once it's on, you're ready for step five, which is putting on your CPU cooler just like normal. So the million dollar question then, how does it perform? Well, the test bench was an Intel 5820K Corsair H100i liquid CPU cooler and a room with an ambient temperature of about 25 degrees. Anthony compared it with Noctua's NTH1, since it's a tried and true performer, and at idle, we see an average of 30 degrees. Under full load using Intel burn test, a maximum of 50 degrees. With the Liquid Ultra Thermal Compound, the idle was also 30 degrees, and under load, it was 50 degrees. Well, it's disappointing, but what does that mean? Well, it could have meant that uh, Anthony screwed everything up and applied it and prepared the surface wrong. It could also mean that our sample chip just happens to have a bad internal heat spreader that's, you know, somehow bottlenecking something, whatever. That... Anthony did do some research. <laughs> wow, that's a new one. And found that most people using this product are using delitted processors. Unfortunately, we don't have a CPU to delit on hand, but those folks are reporting temperature drops of anywhere from five to over 20 degrees. So like so many things, it's kind of like, it's kind of like water cooling your system. It's an extreme solution for hardcore enthusiasts. And for most people out there, it's probably not worth the time or money, but we go through these things for you guys to let you know what's what's up. And let us know in the comments, would you wanna try cool laboratory liquid thermal compounds on your system? NCIX is actually thinking about carrying this product, so leave a comment below if that's something that you want to see. Thanks for watching, and as always, be sure to like and subscribe for more cool videos like this. Get it? Cool, it's funny, because it's about cooling. <laughs> From NCIX.